Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Mr. Kovalt and in this video I'm going to be show you how the periodic table is related to the different parts of the atom. And so here I am using a Bohr diagram uh, model of the periodic table in order to make this clear. So in this periodic table you can see that the elements are represented by the Bohr models. And so again, what I want to point your attention to are the periods and the group numbers. And I want you to notice the patterns here with regard to the Bohr model. So look at the number of energy levels that are filled with electrons or that have electrons in them. And uh, also where those electrons are located. And so <clears throat> what do you notice here? So if you're looking at the group one elements, right, what do you notice that's common for each of them? So you have group one here, you have hydrogen, lithium, sodium, and potassium. What you should notice here is that <clears throat> each element, each atom, the Bohr model shows that the uh, outermost uh, energy level that has electrons in them only has one electron. So here the outermost or the outermost shell or energy level is the first one. It only has one electron. In uh, lithium, you can see that the second uh, uh, energy level has a, an electron in it. So the outermost shell that has electrons here is the second energy level and again it only has one electron for sodium it has three energy levels and the last energy level which is the third one that has uh, electrons in them is the uh, third one it only has one electron and for potassium in uh, period four you'll notice that it has one electron in the fourth energy level. And so the outermost shell for each of these only has one electron. If we move over to group two, you'll notice that if we look at these atoms here, what they have in common is that they have two electrons in the outermost shell. So for uh, this beryllium uh, atom, the second energy level has two electrons. So the outermost shell is the second one that has two uh, electrons only. The outermost shell for magnesium is the third one. So that only has two electrons. And again, you can see that the calcium here, its outermost electrons is the uh, this one and this one in the fourth shell. So the outermost shell is the fourth energy level and you can see it only has two. So group two elements only have two electrons in its outermost shell. And you could see that for groups three, four, and so on. So you could see for group three, you have three electrons in the outermost shell for boron and you have three electrons in the outermost shell uh, for aluminum. For carbon and silicon, it's four. You see four here and four here. For uh, group five, you can see they have five electrons in the outermost shell. Group six has six, and seven has seven, and group eight has eight electrons in the outermost shell. With the exception of helium, uh, helium only has two electrons, but that's only because he, um, the that first energy shell can only hold a maximum of two. That's because that energy level, energy level number one, only has one uh, um, S sublevel, the one S, and that only has one orbital, the S orbital, and that can only hold two, uh, two electrons. And so we talked in an earlier video about valence electrons. And so you can see uh, that the outermost shell for each of these only has one valence electron. So if we're looking at group one, you can see again, one electron in the outermost shell. That outermost shell again is called the valence shell. 
So the valence shell for each of these elements in group one only has one electron. So we say we call those valence electrons. So group one elements only have one valence electron in their in their outermost shell. Uh, group two has two valence electrons. Group three has three valence electrons each, and so on. So the, this shows that the group number corresponds to the number of valence electrons in each, uh, in each element in that group, with the exception, of course, helium, uh, as I explained. Um, so <clears throat> there you could see that the group numbers corresponds to the number of valence electrons. Well, what about the period? So if we look at period one, and we look at the elements in period one, what do you notice about that, those elements? So you can see that here we have one energy level in the atom. And here you can see that only one energy level, the energy level number one, has electrons in it. So both of these what they have in common is that only the first energy level has electrons in it. Okay, so we're filling in the first energy level in this period. In period number two, if we look at what's common as we go across, the number of valence electrons increases. We can see that, so that's different. But what they have in common is that it's the second energy level that's being filled in. So all of these have electrons in the, in the second energy level, the first and second energy level. So that's common to these elements in period two. If we look at period three, you'll notice that, again, the number of valence electrons increases as you go across, and that corresponds against to, again to the uh, group number. But notice that the, it's the third energy level that's being filled up. So as you go across, what they have in common is that the third energy level is being filled up. So they, all, all of these elements in this third period have three energy levels and the third one is being filled up the first two are already filled with uh, the maximum number of electrons in period two the first one's already filled so they have that in common so the first energy level only has two electrons in them but it's the second one that's being filled as you go across and then you can see in the fourth one now it's the fourth energy level that's being filled so all the elements would be uh, would have four energy levels, and so you can see that the period number corresponds to the number of energy shells or energy levels that the that the atom has electrons in, and so that's really good to keep in mind. So group numbers refer or correspond to the number of valence electrons, and period numbers corresponds to the number of energy levels that have electrons in them. So that's uh, that's uh, what I wanted to show you for this video. The Bohr model kind of shows how the periodic table matches with certain characteristics of the atoms. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Uh, put a comment in the comment section. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so that way you can be notified of any other videos I put out. Um, let me know what you think in the comment section. Ask me questions if you have any. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.